Hi, it's Chris from Stamp Blessings, and I'm here today to show you how to make a pop flip card. And I'm going to demonstrate the circle card today because earlier I tried a Facebook Live, hadn't practiced it because I knew how to do the oval, and thought, yeah, I'm good to go. Well, it was a disaster, but I was able to save the card off camera, and I'm excited to tell you that this is how it turned out. So these cards are pop and then they kind of flip open. And I'm gonna show you how to do these in just a moment because who doesn't love a pop-up card? I know I used to make them when I was even a kid and I love them, so. But just before I get started, I want to tell you a little bit about Close to My Heart. We've just come out with a new catalog and the new thing about this catalog is it's covering a three month cycle. So it's July through September. Your pocketbook might thank you because now you can spread it out over a longer period of time. Remember when you order on my website, I automatically enter you to win my mystery hostess rewards. So it's a great perk with shopping with me. And if you're a VIP member, you're also earning 15% back on each purchase that you can use immediately the next purchase, or you can save them up and buy something bigger. So that is another perk. If you'd like to find out more about Close to My Heart, the VIP program, how to get mystery hostess rewards, go ahead and contact me. You can send me a message in the comments, or um, you can also find me on Facebook or through my blog, send me an email. And while I'm mentioning it, go ahead and like and subscribe while you're watching me. I don't post that often, but hopefully when I do, it's worth your time. So let's take a quick look one more time at these pop flip cards. This one is a circle and it gave me a good use to bring out my Spellbinders dies again. So I used two Spellbinder dies for this card. And then on my oval card, which is really pretty also, I actually used three Spellbinder oval dies. And this time I had two packs that kind of interlock. So you, I'm gonna lay them down, but you can see they nest really, really tightly. So the smallest oval was for my focal point. And then the larger two ovals made this little thin ring. Since I didn't find my um, circle dies to be quite that tight, this border is a little bit thicker and that's a quarter of an inch. Probably if I took the time to dig around, I'd find it, but I like the way it looked, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. So we're gonna go ahead and make the circle card because I found this actually more tricky. But at the end of my video, I'll go ahead and share the dimension links below. To get started, I cut a piece of pattern paper that measured four by five and a quarter. And I went ahead and put it on half of a cardstock. I put them together, put my smallest circle die on top, and then ran it through my Big Shot. And actually I use the Tim Holtz Vegabond now because I've had a lot of hand problem with as much cutting as I do and I like the electric version. I will say Close to My Heart has a beautiful new machine that they say cuts like butter. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pass that through. Oops, <laughs> surprise, that already popped out. And now I have my two pieces cut. Now you could attach the paper right away, but um, I like to be able to have these two pieces loose. So as long as you remember to glue a little bit away from the circle, then you won't have problems. And if they stick together, that's okay too. But for me, I just went ahead and I cut the pages, papers separately. So I'm going to just add a little bit more glue and hopefully I'm not getting run out here. And I like to add a little bit around this circle so that it lays flat. If it buckles, it might 
interfere with the popping open of the mechanism. And then I'll just go ahead and lay that on top. I like to lift this to make sure that my circle is perfect and it feels good. So I'll just go ahead and smooth that down. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the inside of the card. On my queen bee card, I used pattern paper and I did a little stamping. On the oval card, I left it white on the inside, but I did some stamping along the bottom just to kind of give it a little bit of interest. So either one of those two techniques will work out great. I'm gonna go ahead and add my pattern paper real quick. And with Close to My Heart, the pattern paper is always so pretty on both sides. I usually have a hard time deciding which side to use. But in this case, I think I'm going to stick with this lighter color. And there we go. And that is ready. So quick and easy so far. So I have these two pieces. And this one is going to go back in the middle. I could leave it white. I could reverse it and use the back side of my pattern paper. I could use the front side of my pattern paper. Or in this case, I decided to go ahead and die cut something that kind of matched but gave a little bit of contrast. And that's what I'm gonna do for this card. So I'm gonna just take a moment and glue that back on. And I'll go ahead and line that up. And by just taking a moment and making sure the edges are even, it's perfect. Now the next thing I wanna do is die cut my little ring. And that just gives it a little bit of interest because otherwise it would just look like this. And that's okay, but let's make it look a little bit more special. So again, I'll take my two coordinating circles and you can use any kind of dies that you have that match. And this time I'm gonna run it through some green paper with some cardstock. So it's easy to eyeball just to get a nice ring around it. I'll show you. To make sure that it stays that way as it goes through your cutting machine, just a little piece of washi tape will hold it down and make sure that you can cut it perfectly. And so we're gonna crank that through and here is the finished piece. So it's perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue to the back of this ring, and then I'm going to put it on my card. So far, we've done all the easy part, but honestly, this whole card is pretty easy. Once you figure out the dimensions of your pop-up mechanism, and the ones that I give you today will be a great starting spot for you. And then you can tweak it as you go, because that's kind of what I did. I watched some videos and then I went back and I played with it. So I really like how that looks. Now for my pop-up mechanism, in my oval card, I left it white. And this piece measured, uh, it was two and a half, by four inches in length. And that will always stay the same. The four inches in length is kind of the key for this to fold into a square and become a pop-up. You'll need a second flap that will cut out separately. On my circle card, I ended up doing one and a half and I did it in white and then I did a second, the pop-up piece in yellow. And you can see, now this one extended quite a bit further because it had to reach the circle that was down a little bit lower in the card. And I think that's what gave me the difficulties before. Before I was working with this tiny space, and then this time now I had already just added a lot of dimension to it or length to it. So that's what was tricky for me the last time. So I think, cross your fingers, I've figured it out. So for this card, I measured one and a half by four inches and I'm gonna score it every one inch. So I like my score pail to do that. That makes it easy. And I'll just go one, two, and three. 
Then I'll come back and I'll just nicely score those one more time. You can fold it in half and then one more. I'll go ahead and set that aside. My second piece is one inch by three inches. And I think that the three inches might be a little bit long that I could maybe go to two and a half. So I may, before I glue it down, come back and cut it off. But I did go ahead and score at the one inch mark. Now we're going to pip, uh, create the pop-up part of this card. So again, remember that I scored it one, two, and three. And that gives me two spots that are flat that I'm going to add some glue. I like to add glue because I think it really stays well and it gives me just a moment to fiddle with it. So on my Facebook Live, I ended up tearing the card apart pretty quickly. But I'm going to go ahead and put it right there, centered of the circle, but so that the flap can still close. And I'll just want to hold it there for just a few seconds. Now I'm going to add glue to the top part of the flap. I'll fold it in the middle so that these two ends touch. Then I'm going to come down with my card and close it right here. I'm going to set um, a block on that for just a second and let it dry and hold for just a moment. So while I'm doing that, letting it dry, I'm looking at my images. What do I want to use to stamp with this? And I think that I'm going to use this set called Smiles from the Garden. It's from two or three catalogs ago, but you can still buy it online from Close to My Heart. And that's what I like about Close to My Heart's um, policies. They keep their stamps online for a long time because they make them all in-house. It's only when you have matching thin cut dies that sometimes you, they will run out of stock and it's while supply, supplies last. So this looks like it's stuck pretty well. Awesome. Now I have this piece and I forgot to um, go ahead and score it and I'll just grab whatever is handy. I think a block will do just well too. And this is going to become my pop-up mechanism. Now before I glue it down, I want to just make sure that it's going to work like, be like I want it to. So I'll come back in and kind of dry piece things. But it is butting up against the edge of that. And so, and then I would add glue to hold it down. And then, sure enough, my circle fits just perfect right in there. So I might leave it that same length, but because I want to experiment again, and I should know better, I'm going to go ahead and cut off about a half inch. And if it doesn't work, I'll just cut a new piece. But I would, again, dry fit it here. Push it down. My flap still closes. And I can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. So again, I swore that I would never change things up live, but here I am doing it again. I'm adding my glue to the one inch flap. And then I want to go ahead and bump it up right against the card front so that it's right there, kind of even with that pop-up mechanism you can see so that when it closes it can still close well all right so i'm going to look back what i did here before and actually i glued the wrong direction so remember how i said about the glue i actually want this longer tip 
to be there. So I'm thinking about one inch of glue. I'm coming around. I had some glue left there, but this time it's okay. It doesn't matter because I want it to go here. And that's why, again, perfect. So it took me just a minute again. So these are tricky, but it's nice to use glue so that you can pull it apart easier. So I'm gonna set this aside and let those two pieces dry. Now I want to decorate this. And I've gone ahead and I've pre-cut my butterfly with the thin cuts. And Close to My Heart has many, almost most of their sets that have matching thin cuts. That makes it really nice. And I really like this artsy doodled butterfly. And I'm gonna go ahead and use Sorbet ink. Now, I will confess that I have a, quite a few of the older style ink pads. This is smoothie, and they're a little bit tricky. You have to pull down, twist, and turn. But the new ink pads are quite easy. They are magnetic. They are large. Look at how big they are. And they just are so easy. The lid kind of can go underneath. You can flip it this way makes it nice and sturdy and just plop it back right down. So I might be using that sage. I wanted to show you how nice those ink pads were. And then I'm gonna go ahead and with a die cut, I wanna just stand over it. I find it easiest to stand and come straight down. So we'll see how that turns out. And it came out perfect, great. Our inks do lighten a little bit as they dry, so that's kind of nice. So right now it looks really dark, but it will end up getting a little bit of a softer look. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. I really like that. The thing I have to decide is, do I want to add any of these other images to it? And let's see. Now I think I'm going to leave it and then put the sentiment on the inside. So I'll go ahead and now begin to glue my focal point onto here. So now I'm adding glue back to that little one inch piece. That was the piece that st stuck out. And I'll go ahead and lay my circle in. And it is a little bit tight. So what you'll want to do is practice holding it down and opening it and closing it so that it can get through all of those ridges. You might even want to take a little bit of a scissors and kind of smooth things out if it's a little bit tight. But I like to just kind of practice getting it through while it's still wet to make sure it fits in perfectly. And it is. I'm going to give a little dimension to this butterfly and just add glue to his middle because that way he has a little bit of flexibility and I, I could always go in and still stamp a small sentiment just down there but i like things a little bit off center and i really like how this background is a little bit like a sky then when i open it up here it's popping open and because my pinks, I used the darker side and the lighter side close to my heart does have that where one side is darker and one side is lighter. So I'll just show you on my green piece. I don't know if you can see that, but that is definitely the darker shade and the lighter. And when I used my pinks, I used one of each, which is fine. That looks good. Looks like it was meant to be. Now I just have to come in and figure out which sentiment I have. You make me smile. Each day is a new beginning and you brighten my day. I think that I will maybe give this to somebody that needs a little uplift. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out my blocks. And I think to make it really pop, I'm going to put it on black. And I'm already mentally prepared. If it doesn't come out very well, very bold, what I can do is come back and take the same pink and make, cut a circle and put the sentiment over it. So I am prepared mentally for this not to come out to work, but I do like the look of stamping over patterned paper and I just don't do it very often. So 
So let's do that. And I'm going to come in. And I think that I want it off to the side. I'm going to hold it down just to make sure that it stays well. And that the ink absorbs from my stamp into the paper. I have a habit of lifting too quickly and then it doesn't always come back. If I was really particular and had been smart, I could have used a stamping platform. But that's just how I roll. Yep, and so it's not as quite as dark as I want. So I'll either come back later and go over it again, or I'll do like I thought and make a nice little pink circle to go down there or a banner. But anyway, this is a pop flip card. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will be back with the dimensions so that you can make your own. Maybe you'll make an oval or maybe you'll make the circle. But either way, I hope this was helpful getting you started. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.